trust you're well taken care of in our absence. Amen. Yes, well, Mike in charge, you can't go wrong. That's right. And, uh, you know, we brought a good word last week. If you were not here last week to hear that, you need to go on the website and check that out. It was a very timely and awesome word. And uh, I know I enjoyed listening to it. And also, just if you ever miss a message and you would like to go back and hear it, they're there all the way back to January, 1st of January. So I uh, just hit past sermons, scroll down, and there they are. And you want to make it bigger, just push YouTube and take it to a big screen. All right, Mark? All right. All right. Well, I just don't even know how to jump into it this morning. It's, uh, I kind of started actually working on this while I was in Florida a little bit. Try not to do too much, but uh, there's just, you know, the, the the balcony over the golf just kind of inspires you. And so I started just writing down some things and finished it up when I got home. I have a lot of verses today. I know when the kids see that, they go, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> How many I have back there, Mike? About 16, 17? yeah. Something like that. Some of them are just going to read and move right through it, so don't get too nervous. I want to start off this morning in John chapter 10 and verse 10. And it reads there, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus speaking says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I always say this verse of Scripture kind of divides the Word of God up for us. If it has to do with stealing, killing, and destroying, guess who signed that one? The enemy, amen? But if it has to do with life and that more abundantly, who does that have to do with? Jesus, amen? Because he said, I come that you might have life and that more abundant. Elsewhere, it tells us that God has given us all things. Everybody say all things. All things. All things that pertain to life and godliness. He has already given it to us. He has already given us the abundant life. He's made provision for you and I to live an abundant life. It's there for us. It belongs to us. It's kind of like, I, I give you a Christmas gift. It's yours. All you have to do is open it. Amen? You need to receive it and open it. And He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We just need to receive what He's given us and open it up and enjoy. Amen? God wants you made whole. He wants you to be whole. He doesn't want you to be broken in despair agony and defeat. A lot of Christians live that kind of life and think they're being holy. How's that song called? Despair, agony, and defeat or something like that? Bloom, despair, and agony. Bloom, defeat, and agony. Whoa! That's it. And, and you can hear him praying. Whoa! Oh! Oh! I like it when they pray that way. Oh! You know, we talk to God like we talk to each other. Prayer is communication. It's not trying to get a holy sound in our voice. I mean, if you're truly... That's your emotion, that's one thing. Okay, I'm not making fun of that. But whenever we just automatically turn on that kind of a voice just because we're talking to God, we don't need to do that. God wants you made whole. You see, when you come to God for salvation... You're not coming just to get a ticket out of hell. You're not coming just for fire insurance, amen? You know, a lot, of, a lot of times we sell it that way. Oh, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and you won't have to go to hell. Now granted, if that's all there were to it, that would be enough. If receiving Jesus Christ saved us from an eternity in hell, which church, I mean, hell is so awful and so real that I can't even begin to describe it to you. Has anybody read the book 30 Minutes in Hell? If you have, you might want to read that. Yeah. That you know, That's a vision someone had of hell, and 
And it really gives you an idea, just a glimpse of what it would be like. Just a small book. And if we read that and really get a revelation of what his hell is like, we're going to be much more grateful for our salvation. Amen? And I'll tell you this too, we may be a little better witness than what we are. But church, salvation does save you from hell. And that is awesome. And that would be even enough by itself. But God has given us more than that. Not only are we saved from hell, but we are saved to go to heaven. Not only do we escape the flames of eternal torture and, and, and uh, agony, but we get to go to heaven, which, you know, the wonders of heaven cannot be expressed in words. They, not only what you see in heaven, I mean, I mean, our eyes to behold the glory of heaven. I mean, we can't even imagine. There's nothing, I mean, as beautiful as this earth is, I remember Keith Green, everybody remember, remember, remember. Yeah. He said, you know, basically, I, I forget how it goes, but earth compared to heaven, we're living in a garbage dump. Yeah. And that's hard to imagine if you, as we looked over the Gulf here a couple weeks ago. It's hard to imagine if you go to the Smoky Mountains or the Rocky Mountains and see how beautiful it is. I compare it to heaven, it's a garbage dump. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? It's hard to imagine beholding something so awesome and so beautiful. And, not, and it goes beyond what we see, church, but it's what you feel. You see, you can feel His glory. Mm. Now, if you've ever had a taste of His glory, if you've ever had the manifested presence of God come upon you, you that, it's, as wonderful as that is, I've had it on numerous occasions. I've had the glory of God visit me. And, and it was so wonderful. You just don't want that feeling to ever go away. But church, I'm telling you, that is just a glimpse. That is just a fraction of what it's going to feel like when we get to heaven because His glory is so strong that we can only take so much. That's why people sometimes may fall down or begin to shake or whatever might manifest in your body is because His presence is so strong and so powerful and so wonderful that these mortal bodies can only take so much. That's why we're going to have to have a glorified body so that we may be able to withstand the glory of of His presence. Yeah. <clears throat> Heaven's going to be awesome. Yeah. You know, we, Cheryl talked about those that passed on. I think of Charles. Pastor Charles. He's there. He's experiencing that which he's preached about for years and years and years. Beyond heaven. We see that Jesus said there in John 10.10 10, that He came that we might have life, and that is life now, and life more abundant. He came that we might have a life full of peace, a life full of joy, a life full of wholeness. That's what the world's looking for, is to be whole. Amen. But if you're not looking to God for wholeness, you're looking in the wrong place. Romans chapter 10 in verse 9. It says there that if we confess, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, confess Him as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved. Romans 10, 13. For whoever... Help me out. Let's say whoever... Whoever. Whoever. I remember back years ago, we had a campaign in a church I was involved with, actually a fellowship I was involved with. We had this little button that said, I'm a whosoever. Because yeah. in the King James it says whosoever, amen, which means whoever. Mm -hmm. I'm a whosoever. And everybody had these little buttons we wore this Sunday. I'm a whosoever. And everybody is a whosoever because whosoever means anybody. Amen. I don't care how bad uh, you may have been, how good you may have been, He will save you if you call upon His name. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, we hear that word a lot, don't we? Jesus saves. I, I think it's kind of 
a bad place to put it, but in bathrooms, you know, you used to go into it, it would say, they carve. That's really no, not a good witness. <laughs> they would carve or, or mark with a magic marker. It's Jesus saves. You know, as Christians, we do need to learn to respect people's property. Amen. So don't go carving, you know, people's walls. Jesus saved. Just tell them. Amen. Or hand them a track or leave a track. I went into the Walmart restroom the other day and there was a track there by a church with a pastor I know. You know, had a, you know, blow out heaven and talked about heaven. So that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, Lester Summerall. Anybody remember Lester Summerall? He used to say, uh, uh, you won't go to heaven if you don't pass out tracks. I don't think he was serious, but what he's saying is if you get too big to tell people about Jesus, then you think you're too big. Amen. We need to tell people about Jesus in one form or another. But the word here I want to focus on is saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, you probably heard this before, but the Greek word saved is zozo. You can look it up in the Strong's Concordance, and that's exactly what I'm going to read to you right here, what is in the Strong's Concordance. Listen to what the word saved means. Zozo. To save, keep safe and sound. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, kept safe and sound. To rescue from danger or destruction. One, from injury or peril. To save a suffering one from perishing. One suffering from disease. To make well, to heal. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be made, shall be healed, shall be delivered. He goes on to say, restore to health, preserve one who is in danger of destruction. To save, rescue, to save in the technical biblical sense. In other words, say from hell and get to go to heaven. To deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment, to save from the evils which obstruct the reception of the messianic deliverance. We are saved, healed, preserved, made whole by calling upon the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. God has made provision through His Word to save us. Isn't that awesome? To save us, to deliver us, to rescue us. God has made provision. It's up to us to apply His salvation to our lives. He's already paid the price, church. You know, a lot of times, and I'm going to step out here because, you know, I don't want to say people are doing things wrong because sometimes what they're doing works. But I want to tell you, the best way to pray is not to ask God to heal you. Because He's already taken care of that for you. We need to declare what He's done for us. Amen. Amen. And stand upon His Word. And again, I'm not going to, you know, other brothers and sisters who, you know, pray that way, they see results sometimes. I don't have all the answers. But I'm going to say a better way to pray is to declare what He's already done. Amen. And to receive it. Just like salvation. You know, we, we don't have to ask God to save us in the sense go do something for us. He's already done it. We just need to apply what He's done to our lives. God's made provision. You know, we, we watched, uh, youth and I watched uh, Heavens for Real Friday night. And it was good. There was some discrepancies, I believe, <laughs> in there. And I'm not going to try to tear it apart. It was a good. It was good. It made you think, and and I enjoyed it. But there was one part in particular that was just way off, and I wish it wasn't in there. And that's whenever the mother who lost the soldier, her boy who was a soldier, and uh, you know she's you know she was like, why did God save your son and not mine? And he said. Do you, do you love your son? She said, yes. Do you think I love my son? Yes. Do you think God loves my son any more than your son? What he was saying is that her son went to heaven too because God loves him. We don't go to heaven just because God loves us. God loves everyone. That's right. But we have to choose to apply that salvation to our lives. We have to receive Jesus into our lives. 
We have to receive that salvation that He's provided. See, it's not just automatic. We have to apply it. Okay. And that's the same with healing and anything else. He saved us. He's already provided. By His stripes, we are healed. But we have to provide it. And that's why I have 15 verses of Scripture today. Because I just want you to see, and there, and there's there's 50 more at least that I could have put up on the screen for you today. But just to give you a little bit of an idea, I want to show you some. We apply His salvation by faith. Yeah. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it reads there, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. See, it's not about your works. It's not about our merit that we are saved or that we're healed or anything else. Some believe sickness is because God's judging you for your sin. Have you heard that before? Somebody's sick, well, what, what did you do? What did you do that, you know, just repent, maybe God will forgive you and heal you. Others will say, well, you know, God's got a lesson. He's trying to teach you. That's why He's not healing you. Because he wants you to learn a lesson before you're healed. Others say this sickness is for God's glory. Excuse me. He, your healing is for his glory. My, my, my uh, response to those who believe this way is well, you ought to have more faith than anybody. If God is punishing you, if God is teaching you a lesson, or if God's getting glory out of it, don't you go to a doctor. How dare you go to a doctor when God's trying to teach you something? How dare you go when it's giving God glory by you being sick? When God has taught you your lesson, punished you, got His glory, then He'll heal you. I mean, if you believe that way. I think you have more faith than anybody. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. John 14, verse 9. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long? And yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? In other words, what you see Jesus do is the will of the Father. So anytime you want to know what God thinks, anytime you want to know what God is like, look at what Jesus did. Look at the life of Jesus. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He goes on to say, well, look, look, let's, first of all, let's look at what Jesus did while He was on our planet. What did He do? Acts 10.38 tells us how God, okay, God's the ones behind this, right? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And what did He do? What did Jesus do? He went about doing good. Not stealing, killing, and destroying, right? He went about doing good and healing all. Everybody say all. Oh. I know I'm making you work a little bit today, but I want you to get it. Healing all, not some, not most, but healing all who were oppressed by God. No, by the devil. Healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus was doing the will of the Father. He was doing good and healing everybody that was oppressed by the devil. That shows you the will of God. You need some further proof? I'll give it to you in a moment. Look at Mark 11.24. We'll come back to that in a moment. But in Mark 11.24, again, we are saved, sozo, through grace by faith. You know, the Bible tells us in three different places, Hebrews and Romans and Galatians, I believe, that we walk by faith and not by sight. 
You see, as believers, we're not to walk by sight. We're to walk by faith. In Mark 11, 24, it says, Therefore I say to you, actually Jesus says, Therefore I, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, in order for us to believe and receive healing, church, there is a truth that we must establish. And if you do not take anything else away with you today, take this truth with you. If we are not convinced... Well, let me back up. Here's the truth. He wants to heal you. He wants you well. He wants you made whole. That's what you got to understand. That is God's will for you. He wants you made whole. He came and did all that He did that you might be made whole, that you might be saved, that you might be healed, that you might be delivered, that you might be made whole. If we're not convinced of that, there's going to be doubt. And it's important to remove doubt. As you shall see here in a moment. Matter of fact, James, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. It reads, but let him ask in faith. You know, faith's not a bad word. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Let him ask in faith without doubting. F.F. F. Bosworth said this, Don't doubt God. If you must doubt something, doubt your doubts. Because they are unreliable. But never doubt God nor His Word. So if this is so important, how do we do that? How do we overcome doubt? I'll tell you, it's two simple things, and I could preach this every Sunday, and, and, and we still wouldn't get it. Because there's been preachers all over the world preaching this every Sunday, and people still don't get it. How do I know that? Because they take surveys that prove people don't get it. You spend time with Jesus, because when you get to know somebody, and they're trustworthy, you begin to trust them. The Bible says, I think it's over in Chronicles, I'm not sure, but it says, they that know their God shall do great exploits. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> the more you know God, the greater exploits you will do. Spend time with Jesus. Get to know Jesus. Build a trust relationship with Jesus. And fill your heart, your spirit with the Word of God. How do I know that most people don't do that? Because they've taken surveys and said, uh, what, what's the average time of day you pray? And this has been a while back, but the survey, this is among pastors. Now, I know we're just like you guys. But, you know, at the same time, though, this is what God's called me to. And, you know, who much has been given, you know, much is expected. Okay, so I, I would hope that maybe I would take prayer at least as seriously as you do. Among pastors, the average was like two minutes a day. Two minutes, and that's the spiritual leadership. Two minutes a day. And I'm not sure about the Bible, but I would expect it's probably about the same. You see, we need to get the Word of Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. These two things is what will help you dispel doubt and believe. Amen? Amen? So, if things aren't happening, that's just, I mean, I'm not saying that it's always the case. But that's a good place to start. Amen? What am I doing to build my, my inner being? What am I doing? You know, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in my heart? You see, we, we, we need to spend time with God. I don't have time. I don't mean you have to just sit down and and uh, do nothing else. But, you know, during the day, while you're driving your car, while you're taking a shower, while you're just walking somewhere, doing housework, whatever it may be, 
You can spend time with God. It doesn't have to be on your knees at an altar. Just spend time with God. It's, it actually, the Bible says we should pray without ceasing. That means we should be in an attitude of prayer from morning to night. When you wake up in the morning, your thought can be, oh, good Lord, morning, not, you know, what's they say, not good Lord this morning. <laughs> you know, but, but, but when you go to bed at night, thank you for this day. If you had some troubles, Lord, just, I'm just looking forward to a fresh start in the morning. I know your mercies are new every morning. And, and you see, you can just, and, and the more of the word you get in, the, the, the more you can use that in your prayer. And I'm becoming more and more convinced that a prayer should not be necessarily asking God to do things He's already done, but declaring what He has done and applying that to your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So I'm just waking up to things I've known all along and just kind of got away from, in part. But God's rejuvenating that. Amen? And again, I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm just saying I believe this is a better way. Hallelujah. Well, I need to keep moving. Where are we at? Uh, all right. I, I sat down this morning and began just writing a bunch of things down. I think I got all those. So we'll move on. You see, God has shown us His will in His Word. So if you see His will in His Word, you know this is will. Amen? But many Christians pray a faith destroying phrase. They'll pray this prayer, Lord, just heal K, Lord, I just do this great thing, da 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 da, if it be your will. How can you be standing in faith and not doubt when you don't even know if it's God's will to do it or not? You got to know and be confident in the fact that it's God's will for you to be healed before you can stand and not doubt that you're well. I don't know if you want Kay healed or not, but I believe she's healed in Jesus' name. It just doesn't work that way, does it? You've got to be convinced of the fact that God wants you whole. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. I'm going to run through several verses real quick. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 7, it says, Then I said, Behold, I have come... This is Jesus. I have come uh, in the volume of the book as it is written of me, to do your will, O oh God. Jesus came to do the will of God. What did He do? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. John 6, 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. Again, so whatever you see Jesus do, He's portraying the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Matthew 12. 15. But when Jesus knew it, He withdrew from there. Listen. And a great multitude followed Him and He healed them all. Jesus never said no. He didn't say, you need to hang on to that for a while for God's glory. He, didn't, he never said, no, I'm not going to heal you today because uh, there's a lesson you need to learn. He didn't say it. The Father doesn't want you healthy. He never said it. Matthew 14, 36. It says, And begged Him that uh, they might only touch the hem of His garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Why were they touching His garment? Because they believed if they touched His garment, they would be made well. See, that's how we have to come to Him. And if I just receive this promise, I'll be made well. By your stripes I am healed. You've already paid the price for me to receive. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out spirits with a word and healed all, there it is again, who were sick that he, it might be fulfilled which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself, Jesus, took our infirmities and bore our sickness. He healed all who were sick. All who were sick. And notice, he bore our sickness. He bore our sin. He did it so that you wouldn't have to. He did it as our substitute. He bore it all for us. 
in Jeremiah chapter 1 in verse 12. Now here, this part excites me. Well, the other part excites me too, but this really excites me. It says in verse 12, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Jesus is ready to perform. You know, we don't have to beg him. <laughs> He's ready. On your mark, get set, ready, go. Man. He is ready to perform his word. In other words, he will stand behind his word. We see a lot of political messages. You've seen a few of them lately? <laughs> a lot more starting to spend their money on commercials, aren't they? But we see them, and at the end of the commercial, the candidate will say, I am John Doe, and I approve this message. I can see God saying, I am God, and I approve this message. He will stand behind his word. He will look after his word to accomplish it. And here's the cool thing. He sends angels to accomplish, to perform his word. I believe in angels. Amen. I don't believe we need to glorify them. I don't think we need to worship them. But I believe in angels. Psalms 103, verse 20. It reads there, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. And again, Angels are not these little chubby babies with wings. <laughs> That's just not the way they look. And your grandma is not an angel just because she went to heaven. Humans are humans. Angels are angels. They're two different beings. I mean, I hear people say it all the time. Somebody dies, well, they're an angel in heaven now. No, they're not. They're still Aunt Mary. They just have a glorified body. They are experiencing the wonders. They still have the memories. Bless the Lord, you His angels, who excel in strength, who do His word. Listen, heeding the voice of His word. When we speak His word, we are the voice of His word. When you declare the word of God, you're speaking the word of God, you're declaring His promises, you are speaking His Word and it says angels heed the voice of His Word and perform it. Amen. Man, when you speak God's Word, you need to have some expectation tagged on to that. Yes. Whew. I can feel His glory on that one. Hmm. <laughs> Mercy. So, when we speak His Word in faith and not doubting, God's angels heed the voice of His Word to perform it. In Mark 11, 23, we're almost done. It says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says, says, or speaks to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Amen. And church, that's not out of context. There's no other way you can look at that. With the exception of this, it doesn't just mean a, a literal mountain, although I believe it does mean that. I mean, if I'm out traveling somewhere and I'm going to die unless I can get on the other side of that mountain, I'm going to start talking to it. Believe God either give me the strength to get up and over it, or He'll remove it. Or I, and when I say "be gone," nobody believed me when I came back, but I still yeah. be gone. But it can be just any mountain of circumstances in your life. Yes, you can speak to. But we don't do that, do we? We just want to call everybody and talk about our problem. No, oh, you don't know how bad it is. You don't know how big it is. I don't know how I'm ever going to get over this. I'm just doomed and gloomed. Why not declare His Word? Why not declare His promises? The Word of God says they are yes and amen. amen. Speak His Word, expecting angels to come and to perform to do that Word. And it's amazing when you see it come to pass. 
Well, what if it doesn't happen? What have you lost? Just don't give up. Amen? We'll get, we'll get to that in just a moment. Matter of fact, let's just get to it right now. It doesn't always happen immediately. Remember the story in Daniel? Let me refresh your memory a little bit. Daniel 10, verses 12 and 13. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day... Okay, help me out one more time. First day... That was kind of weak. Try it again. First day. First day. Thank you. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. God hears your prayers. The first day. God answers your prayers the first day. You know, sometimes I say, well, you know, it's all in God's timing. No, God's timing is today. God's timing was yesterday when it comes to being made well. Well, God will heal me in His time. Like God wants you to hang on to it for five or six weeks. I love it whenever uh, Moses asks Pharaoh, you know, when you want the frogs gone, what did he say? Tomorrow. I don't know about you, but if I'm overcome with frogs or whatever, and he says, when you want them gone, I'm, I'm going to say, right now. Yeah. Not one more day with the frogs. No. Today. Right now. The first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. You see, Many times when you pray, God answers your prayer and He sends your answer. But there's this thing called spiritual warfare. There is a demonic realm. There's a spiritual realm out there. It talks about it in Ephesians chapter 6. And many times you just got to stand and speak the Word of God and stand on the promises of the Word of God and just continue to stand. How long do I have to stand, Pastor Tony? Until you don't have to stand anymore. Man. Just keep standing. I've shared the situations in my life where I've had uh, different, uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, I hate to keep using my own, but, you know, I, I, I had uh, shingles. And, man, I mean, I prayed and I prayed in faith. You know, but I didn't just get all discouraged. Why am I not being healed? Why? You know, I mean, this went on for weeks. And finally, one day, I just told Cheryl, so I'm going to go to this revival that was happening two and a half hours away in Cedar Rapids. We went to every other weekend. Because we were hungry. You know, I mean, we, we were hungry. We drove five hours every Friday there and back just to get in His presence. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, and we actually were having things going on in our own church, but we just wanted to go where we could just sit and soak it up. I keep saying, Lord, show me a place around here where I can just go soak it up. I haven't found it yet. Not that they're not out there, I just haven't found it. But, but, and not that God's not doing things here, but you know, I, I just want to go some place where we weren't over everything, where we could just go sit down and receive. Okay. Well, anyway, I told Cheryl, I said, I'm, I'm just going to drive down there by myself. I'm going to pray on the way there. And uh, it was an all day thing. They had these workshops for revival, this and that and the other. And, uh, and they're right at the uh, end of the, the sermon and the altar call. I've shared this several times. But, I mean, I tell you, you ever had shingles? It hurts. It just, it just hurts. I mean, I put my hands in it, just pain would just go through my body. And, uh, man, I mean, when they gave that off, I was up. And, I mean, I was the first one in line. And the pastor came up, and he said, how can I pray for it? And I told him, and he prayed. And church, it just felt like, felt this twice. I was talking about one time the night before, but it just felt like oil. Warm oil just began to go down my body. And as it did, all the pain just went away. But this is awesome. I go back, healed. Then about a half hour later, that pain started coming back. But on the way home, I said, I will not receive this. I am healed by the strikes of Jesus. Devil, you're a liar. And when I wake up in the morning, I said it again, and I said it in faith, I will be completely healed. I have no pain in Jesus' name. I woke up in the morning pain-free. Never had it again. 
Amen. Yes. Amen. Same happened with arthritis. I mean, my head arthritis so bad in my hand, I fought it. I took drugs and man, they were awful. Methyltrexate made me depressed. And I said, I'm done with this. And I'm not against medicine. And it took a while. It was a fight. But what was I doing? I was standing. And I'm not saying you can't go to a doctor while you're standing. It's not that you can't take medicine while you're standing. But just don't give up. Stand there for it. On the promises of God. Keep fighting. Keep telling the devil he's a liar. And I receive the promises of God. And get along with God and tell him you love him and you trust him. Amen. I walk by faith and not by sight. I tell you, it's when you give up that you lose. As long as you're fighting, you're winning. Yeah. God wants you well. You're not, you don't have to beg God to heal you. It's His desire for you to be healed, to be well, to be whole. It's His desire that you not have any bondage, any baggage. He wants you delivered. He wants you free. He wants you full of joy. He wants you to have peace. And it's not that you won't have difficult times. I'm not saying that life is just euphoria and you're always up in the clouds somewhere. No, you're a soldier too. And there's times there'll be fights to be fought. There'll be spiritual warfare that you'll have to be involved in. But also at the same time, remember, He's doing the fighting. You're just doing the speaking. You're speaking His Word and angels are heeding the voice of God. Yeah. So I want to encourage you. First of all, Remember, realize that God wants you whole. That has to do with wholeness. That has to do with an abundant life. That's what God wants for you. Amen? Yeah. And secondly, speak His Word. Find a promise and stand on it. Now we used to do that. When I grew up in a Baptist church, we sang that song. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Amen? Stand on those promises. <clears throat> Don't speak the doubt. Fill your heart, fill your spirit with the Word of God. And if you're filling your heart and your spirit with the Word of God, guess what's going to come out of your mouth? The Word of God, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. His Word's powerful, church. It's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Speak the Word of God. Is it always easy? No, it's not easy, but that's part of the warfare. Amen? I mean, you talk to a soldier over in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever they may be, and you say, is it easy? No, but I'm standing for the USA. And they've been through boot camp. They, they're prepared. And the problem today is we have somebody in the church that never has gone through boot camp. They just heard the, the good stuff. And I'm telling you good stuff today. But at the same time, sometimes you got to stand. Sometimes you just got to just, just set your eye on the prize. And see the prize. You see, we pray wrong sometimes. Many times. I've, I've said, you know, I've preached this stuff for years. But I, I, I've never felt it anymore and I feel it right now. But... Whatever it is that you desire, if it's healing, if it's deliverance from some kind of a bad habit or whatever, if it's financial, whatever it might be, look at the answer. Don't look at the problem. You see, look at the answer. And begin to speak the answer. But my God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By His stripes I am healed. Devil, you are a liar. I see myself prosperous. I see myself healed. I see myself delivered. And you look at the picture. That's hope. Hope is the picture. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We see hope paints the picture and you need to see the picture and you fill the picture with faith. Faith is the ink that fills in the picture. <clears throat> if I want a picture of my lovely wife and I take my, my camera phone and, and I put over at Mike and take a picture of Mike, what am I going to see? 
I'm going to see Mike's mug and not my lovely wife's mug. Amen? You see, you want to look at the answer, not the problem. Do we have problems? Yes. Yes, we have problems. But we don't have to keep them because what does God say to do with our problems or our burdens? He says, cast them on the Lord. But what we do many times is we take our burden, we, we, you know, it's like a hundred pounds sack, sack, and we walk up to the altar or to the presence of God, whatever it might be, and we take that hundred pound sack and say, Lord, here, I'm just casting this upon you. And you feel better, and you go, oh, I feel so much better. And then we pick the sack back up, and we walk off and keep carrying it. He wants the best for you. The Word of God says Jesus came to try to have life and more, that more abundantly. First, you've got to believe it. It's hard to convince somebody something's theirs if they keep saying it ain't. I mean, I can try to give a gift to sure all day long. You know, if I walked up and said, you know, here's this $15,000 ring, I want you to have it. She's going to go, first of all, she, I know you ain't got a $15,000 ring. <laughs> No, no thank you. But first she's got to believe that I got it. I said, honey, I saved up all these years for it. Here it is. Don't get your hopes up, honey. <laughs> no problem. But, but she said, no, I know I'm not taking No, that's not for me. And she's not going to enjoy it, is she? But he, he has the resources, amen. amen? And he said he's already given you everything that pertains to life in Godliness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You again for Your goodness. We thank You for Your love, Your mercy. We thank You for Your provision. And Lord, we thank You that You love us. And Lord, that You have already given us everything. You've already paid the price. You, you have been our substitute so that we would not have to bear the things that You bore for us. And Lord, I just want to speak over Crosswalk Fellowship today. And Lord, I pray that you would take the words that I spoke and make them understandable. Uh, just apply them to each and every one of our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would dispel all doubt as we build our relationship with you and as we study your word, Lord. I just thank you for making it alive for us and bringing change to our lives. And Lord, we're just careful to give you all the praise for all that you have done for us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 God bless you.